Hello, it's Mrs Wells here and I'll be reading you chapter 8 of Billy the Bird. I've had an idea, I said to Lily Leaf and Mr Keylock. It was Saturday morning and I was cleaning out the guinea pig's hutch, as I always do then. He groans and grumbles because it means he has to wait longer than usual for his breakfast. Lily Leaf usually comes to watch, wearing an expression which says plainly that it's a pity other animals aren't as clean in their habits as cats are. An idea about what? she said. About Billy's next scheduled flight in February, I replied. What idea? said Mr Keylock. And hurry up, do girl, I'm famished. Well, I said, I don't really know where he goes or what he does on these flights, except for the last one. Usually when he returns, he just goes straight to sleep. And then of course, next day, he doesn't even know he's been flying. If only I could go on a flight with him. But of course he can't carry me. I'm much too heavy. So am I, said Lily Leaf quickly. But aren't you curious to find out what flying would be like? I said to her. Curiosity killed the cat, she replied. But you never know. Guinea pigs might fly. We both turned to Mr Keylock. Don't look at me, he squeaked. You don't weigh much, I said to him. Billy could easily carry you. Billy could easily drop me, said Mr Keylock. After I'd put fresh sawdust on his hutch floor and filled his hay rack and his water bottle and given him some cabbage leaves, Lily Leaf and I walked back up the garden together. How long do you suppose Billy will go on flying? I said to her. Surely he won't still be doing it when he's bigger. He'll be too heavy to lift off, won't he? Think of those astronauts, the cat said. She'd seen them on the telly too. They're weightless, no matter how big they really are. So he could still be doing it when he's a grown man as big as Dad, I said. Lily Leaf made a sort of chuckling noise and then I began to giggle. Dad is a very big man, a bit on the fat side to be honest and I had a sudden mental picture of him swooping and soaring above the town like a jumbo jet. How horrified the townspeople would be if they saw the large figure of the chairman of the Ways and Means Committee whizzing over their heads. Sooner or later, somebody's bound to spot him, I said. Close enough to see that, you, that what they're looking at isn't a UFO or an alien, but a small boy called Bird flying like one. Then all the world would come to our town, prime ministers and presidents and pop stars, even the Queen perhaps, to see this flying boy. And it'd be all in the newspapers and on the telly and the radio and there'd be film crews everywhere and would never have a moment's peace. None of that had happened as a result of the January flight because no one had seen Billy except the cat burglar. And no one believed his story because they thought he was concussed or drunk or mad. But our local evening paper kept on about UFOs and aliens, printing letters from people who believed in one or the other. He's much more likely to be seen now, I thought, because they'll be looking for him, looking up into the skies lit by a full moon. But luckily, I suppose, the weather at full moon was terrible both in February and March, so that Billy had to be content with flying around indoors. Not till the following month did I allow him to fly out. Once again, we worked it so that he didn't take off till well after midnight. But the full moon, but the April full moon, was the most brilliant one imaginable. The town was lit up as though by the town was lit up as though by a great searchlight in the sky. Someone, I said to Lily Leaf, is bound to see him this time, and someone did. Boys will be boys, the saying goes, and Billy could be naughty or silly like all little boys are now and then. I suppose he must have become bored with just flying quietly about and thought he'd amuse himself by giving someone a fright. So he landed on top of the church tower and sat there dangling his legs. He looked down and there in the street right below him was a man, a man in uniform walking slowly along. Billy couldn't see that it was a policeman. He just thought, I suppose, that it'd be fun to give this man a fright. So he shouted, Boo! How do I know, how do I know all of this? Because it was in the next day's paper. Further sighting of alien. Readers may remember the story which we printed with regard to a burglar 
who, in January, stated that he had been attacked by an alien, a story which many of you will have considered to be nonsense. Now, however, a further sighting has occurred, this time from a much more reliable source. Our community policeman, PC George Gibbs, made the following report. At 1.15am, I was passing St Margaret's Church when I heard a loud shrill cry above me. Looking up, I could see clearly by the light of the full moon a figure sitting on the very edge of the church tower. I was unable to distinguish its features, but it appeared to be the size of a small child, about four years of age. How it came to be there, I had no idea, since the church is kept locked at night and no child could possibly have scaled the tower from the inside, but it was obviously in a position of the gravest danger. Don't more! I called up to it. Just stay right where you are. Help is on its way. And I radioed the police station, requesting them to summon the fire brigade. The appliance arrived at St Margaret's Church at 1.32am. As soon as the fire engine arrived, I read, the fireman extended a long ladder to the top of the church tower, where the figure was still standing. However, it then disappeared, presumably moving to the further side. But when a fireman reached the head of the ladder, the newspaper report went on to say, and climbed onto the flat area on the top of the tower, he found that it was empty. There was no sign of anyone, and a search of the interior of the church and of the churchyard revealed nothing. Finally, the report concluded, whatever PC Gibbs had seen on on top of St Margaret's Church had vanished into thin air. How can it have done this, human or alien? unless it had the power of flight. Humans do not have this power. Aliens presumably do.